Good morning. Today's professional development is all about music composition with grades K through 5 in a general music classroom. Our classroom here is set up uh, for three adult learners um, who are going to be working on building some different manipulatives for their class. We're going to work on oral composition, uh, composition using manipulatives, composition that's led by making creative choices, as well as um, composition that is a random selection of pitches, um, all using body percussion, clapping, tatting, snapping, unpitched percussion, which is over there in the corner of the room, and pitched percussion using barred instruments uh, from the Orff Schulwerk um, classroom model. So all of those things combined give a really, really great opportunity for these teachers who are going to be here today to learn how to bring composition strategies to kids who are in grades K through 5 who uh, otherwise would not have that kind of opportunity. A lot of people are limited by their technical ability and by their um, their mistaken kind of thought that they can't do this, that they can't compose because they just don't know enough about music literacy. All along the way we use themes that we teach in class about rhythm and pitch and music literacy to teach composition but not in a way that limits it. We, we don't want to limit creativity uh, on, uh, on the basis of just seeking music literacy. So that's what today's professional development is about um, and, uh, and we're going to get started. How have you taught 20th century music or brought it to your kids at all? It's limited in, in my class too. Yeah. But how have you brought it to them uh, in any particular experiences that you guys have had? Well, it's just it's either entering or exit music, or I use it for right. movement. I mean, or a composer of the month. I mean, because I, I rotate so whatever I'm listening to. Um, but it's just exploratory. We don't actually like, delve into the delve theory of it at all. I mean, I haven't I haven't had an easy, easy way to it. We had a young audiences program at high school um, do a program that would probably fit fairly well into something like postmodernist. He did a radio show, and the percussion class was the sound effects. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's approaching sound as music aspects of 20th century music. Yeah. And that's the closest I've seen <coughs> do it. And that certainly could work on an elementary level. We find they do that a lot in uh, literature. So adding, in fact, that's one of our objectives, curricular objectives, is add <coughs> percussive sound to literature to go along with mm -hmm. it. So we'll pull books and mm -hmm. figure out, you know, on our own how to, how to add stuff in. Uh, so this is basically taking the idea of a tone row from serialism mm -hmm. and bringing it to the kids. How to create a tone row um, and you use it for uh, composing. So what we are going to do is um, I have over there I have three sets of uh, F sharps and B flat and what we're going to do is we're going to create the um, that layout on the instruments um, right now. So what I need you guys to do is pick up one of those sets. Actually, let's do this. Let's put these back. Okay. Pick up okay. one of those sets and bring over whatever instrument that goes. Take the upper octave off. Everything from C to uh, C up. So even take off the, the C. Oh, okay. I understand. And then what you're going to do is add in the S sharp and the B flat where they would go in order. So what is your, what's your working knowledge of a tone row or serialism in general? Like if you were to bring this to your kids and say, here's what we're going to do today. We're talking about serialism. What would you, what, what are some things you would talk about? What are some composers you would, you know, introduce? Schoenberg. Schoenberg. Uh -huh. um, wow. Using, oh, chromatics. We don't talk about chromatics. So, piano. Um, ugh, half steps. <laughs> yeah, there's a half step. Um, Would you really talk about half steps? I just show it to them. 
sh just like show, just on the like, I'm gonna use all of these. We're gonna, you know, like, um, but no, I wouldn't actually do the theory. <laughs> no. <laughs> I might try the every note is equally important. Ooh. That's a good one. Yeah, that's way good. of pursuing it. Especially if you've done lots of the every line ends on C exercises. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So C is important. But now every note is equally important. That mm -hmm. is kind of fun. Contrast and breaking the rules there a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, wow. There, I mean, you could do this random. I mean, there's a random aspect to it, but then there is order. I mean, it, I'm not sure. You talked about composers, um, the music from a horror film. Because mm. mm. they'll make that connection themselves once they hear something. They hear it, we've done um, we've done scary song creation on the piano and I always keep the face of the piano open and I'll get kids to tell me what they want me to do. How does a horror film start? And they'll say, you know, they'll they'll come up with well it's got like that, you know, like that jaw and stuff. And they will come up with different whatever and use the inside of the piano to create things, have kids pluck yeah. and stuff and whatever. And we'll, I, we'll I wouldn't that necessarily kind of thing. always I like talk about should be alone right now. like yes. the past, <laughs> but like in the you know the sounds that we're adding to the black, you know, showing them the white and the black keys on the piano, just to say you know well now F sharp, you know this bar that we've added is between F and G. It's you know like the white keys on the piano. This would be the black key that's in between them. You know, there's increments that we use frequently, and then there's, but that's not the smallest distance between notes. There's stuff in between. So this comes in, in our curriculum, somewhere between fourth and fifth grade. Sure. You know, with fifth graders, the question is, would you have used accidentals already? Mm -hmm. The option of using D pentatonic, just as a, Variety yeah. is there, and just replace you know the F sharp part. Part of the hard part is just keeping track of all the diff different bar, you know, the different bars and utilizing them. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes it's easier to just not do that. But I think if they have a working knowledge of accidentals, you know, what is a sharp? I've seen it before. What is a flat? I've seen that before, even if they don't know. We use it with our barbells. I mean, I I am in C pentatonic like almost all the time because mm -hmm. I it's just it's, it's just easy. It's easier. Those notes those. work. But mm -hmm. yeah. when we're playing melody um, on our barbells, they are, okay, be flat. <laughs> so sharps. what we're going to do with this is um, we do not have 12 tones here, so we're not using 12-tone composing method. We are dealing with a nine, nine pitches. And using these available nine pitches, what I want you to do um, is create a three-note pattern that do not have strong harmonic implications. That you're going to stick with uh, a row of three tones that don't have a strong harmonic implication. Your first pattern is three three notes. Do the same thing with three additional notes. So you're going to create a second pattern to put right after that. Remember your first one and create a second one. This okay. is serialism, so we're going to use all nine tones. Okay. I don't remember the stuff, Dave. We're going to take that first sequence, mm -hmm. take off your C, D, E, and replace it with that first sequence of notes in order that you're playing them. Okay. Not in pitch order, just in the order that you've played your first set of three notes. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And go, they're your first position, second position, third position. Wait, take, oh God. <laughs> I'm having issues. So what am I doing? You are going to take 
play me the pattern that you came up with. <laughs> Put that in order. Mm -hmm. One through six. One through six. Oh, oh. Like physically yes. move the bars okay, so that go. it's in order. Yeah. There we go. Left to right. In order, left to right, I should say. No gaps. We're going to move them all together in order. So your first three, your second three, right in order. Yes. <laughs> give you a drum. Although this is you. You need to play the important part. No, I'm gonna, I, I sometimes forget that with these barred instruments, you can do this. Yeah. Like the, I'm so used to diatonic, diatonic, you know, in order. I forget sometimes. One thing I always have the kids do is do all the bar manipulation. Like mm. they do it all because I don't have time between classes mm -hmm. to do it all myself. So we train mm -hmm. them like from first grade, right? Mm -hmm. Take off your Fs and your Bs, or lift them up and put them down. Well, burgers you and know, fries, baby. Two, two hands, you know, two hands mm -hmm. top and bottom. We talk about it, but we don't dwell on it. Mm -hmm. They do all the manipulation, they put it back when they're done. So, all right, now that you have a six, a six tone row, mm -hmm. you're gonna create, um, you're gonna put the last three in order. Mm -hmm. um, don't do it randomly. Pick an order that you, you, you like you like to hear. <laughs> Experiment with just those last three um, in order. I just broke out of serialism. <laughs> had, to, had to land on c <laughs> You just had to, didn't you? So play yours. We're just going to listen to kind of each of them. So what I notice about what I notice about the difference between the three of them is this sounds fairly tonal to me, perhaps because they're moving by step. This sounds, and judging by the bars, you're moving by by more leaps and skips. Mm -hmm. What was different about carries? Players again. She has a long stretch she's, in she's, order she's her and high to low. Let's take, let's take carries. Order your bars. All of these are great, great options. Okay, you've created your row. We're going to use carries. And order your bars exactly like she's got them. Free tempo. And you're going to play it together. <laughs> what is this like with kids? This would be difficult, but what would this for those top crust like those learners that like really need this? What is this stretch for them? Oh, this is like well, ensemble playing. Higher concept of music. music they're, yeah. they're really listening. So, from a technical point of view, they've composed, and there's no technical barrier right now because mm -hmm. you're literally moving from one to the next to the next to the next, mm -hmm. and the pitch is changing. It's the advantage of using these instruments that everybody considers just elementary instruments is that you can manipulate it so that you take away the technical disadvantage. Mm -hmm. So they're moving sequentially. Mm -hmm. What's the issue with having them try to play and perform it all at the same time without a steady beat? Oh gosh. Mm -hmm. 30 a, different ideas? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Your idea of tempo, but actually, this is, this is a good exercise to bring them together ensemble because they really are listening to each other. Yeah, let's try it. Let's see how it gets put together. Go ahead. Can we roll? Sure. Emerges from that when you when you're doing that as a as a group. Sense of community. Yeah, 
I'm listening a lot harder to what other people are doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who yeah. was actually leading that? I think I was. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pick a couple to lead and then don't lead some of the rest. Okay. Go. So it's interesting to hear how one person shifts from one to the next to the next to the next. And each one of these uh, these pitches in the tone row becomes an important pitch unto itself. And that's where we can kind mm -hmm. of take away this discussion of tonality and we can bring it into what you were talking about where every note is equally important and the leader of the group is moving between, is shifting mm -hmm. from person to person in here. Um, what class size would you want to ideally do this with? Might be a stretch for you. I mean, ideally we do it with like three people would work, it'd be beautiful, it'd be amazing. <laughs> right. Ideally though, like if you were really focusing on stretching a class, um, getting out of the, the traditional class size norms, how many kids would you want to, to do this with? I would have six, or excuse me, like 12 and 12, I would split. Is there a way that you could bring leaders to the fore without taking up too much time? Yeah, here, you can do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could, you could have them be the conductor, or every time you hear that instrument, the shekre or whatever, you move. Um, or even I would think have a couple of the, the instrumentalists bring their instrument up to a table oh, yeah. and, and shift, shift. Oh, whichever yeah. one, you know, pay attention to who moves first mm -hmm. of these three or four people. I was going to say, people. I would definitely do this in a circle oh, for yeah. sure because then it's easier That's for easier everybody to see. To see. Um, play it with a steady beat this time. Let's let's replace this, replace it with a steady beat. Boom, 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 boom. You pick where the accent's going to be though. But we're all moving together, and you are choosing to either accent or not accent each, each one. Okay. One, two, here you go. This time, do it, and make sure you don't accent it at the same time as, as a partner. <laughs> <laughs> we all like picked up sharp. <laughs> if you accent it, don't accent the one right after it. One, <laughs> right. two, off you go. You two accented all the exact same. <laughs> I think because you could see each other. I'm just like, eh. I was You're not like, looking nice at him at all, though. I was not. I'm trying to be completely, totally random. Get her a drum. Put it out, kid, today. <laughs> what you liked by Toto. Yeah, that's uh, great. Uh, this time, uh, that's, that's one of the ways we can do it. What I would like you to do is when you get to. You're going to start. When he gets to the third note, mm -hmm. you start. Okay. When she gets to the third note, you start. We're going to do this okay. in canon. Um, and you can hear where that would probably break down at some point without you know the, yeah. the mm -hmm. beat in there with, with kids. Um, play it backwards together. Let's hear what it sounds like backwards. Off we go. different experience to kids. You're not using a Bordeaux over here. You're not playing a background to anything. It really is open and um, as a teacher you can make the harmonic choices to provide the backing harmonic, mm -hmm. you know, tonality. Two. Here we go. The other thing you can talk about is how it creates a rhythmic structure um, mm -hmm. accompaniment rather than just a 
a melodic kind of structured tonality. So I'll just pick a rhythm accompaniment here, at, hopefully at random, somewhat at random, because it's diatonic, and we'll go same thing. One, two, off we go. It, it is, it is, and that's the thing that I like about this is that it is an entirely separate language of talking about composition and about creation of of music. So this is a way to connect um, composition and serialism to the historical context of what something like you know you might hear from Schoenberg or in a horror movie. You could get them to create you know a piece of horror music make choices, use the contrabass bars, go get a big piece of sheet metal and shake it around or whatever, you know. I've got the thunder drums. Yeah, yeah. Thunder tubes. Ooh. Thunder tubes, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, I love that. I think the thing about this that resonates with me is that it does not require a technical ability in mallets mm -hmm. any more than you are moving from one pitch to the next. If you have a student who is having a hard time with a melody mm -hmm. and they just are not getting it, you can take the bars and order them even in pentatonic, just in order. All right, here's what you're gonna do. We're gonna break this down so it's in order. Focus mm -hmm. on your mallet technique. Take away the fact that you've got to jump around, mm -hmm. and and work with these instruments. So, it's about using the tools you have at your disposal, manipulatives, instruments, rather than just the tools you have in your head. But all the while, creating tools in your head to be able to whip back out and, and use for composition uh, strategies. Which just made this very uh, accessible to the kids. Yeah, totally. And there, I mean, it's a, there's a tone row that they just created, chromatic tone row, essentially. Um, it's crazy. Yeah. Pretty crazy. And, and it, oh. it then takes 20th century music to a certain extent and makes it a, a a thing. It wasn't like, oh yeah, there's that like fringe thing that was, but they remember this was a really cool activity. This was a really, you know, we created something out of that that was not random. That's the difference between this and the um, the musical patterning techniques activity was this is not random. This is a clear choice to not have a tonality and making clear decisions not just based on random chance. 